socialising costs money. And you might start to notice some of your friends may have more of it than you do. L-O-D-S of D-M-O-N-D. What's they spell? Loads of money, probably. With inflation the highest it's been since the 1990s. The thing was we were going to go see Hootie and the Blowfish. Hootie and the... Oh my, I, I, I can catch them on the radio. Many of us are finding our finances going backwards, trying to keep up. Shall we start with the oyster sabayon? You know what I bet is great? The bread. Oh. Mm. True friendships are priceless, but we don't tend to talk about how much money we earn with our mates. I couldn't help noticing that we appear to be considerably richer than you. <laughs> so, how do we keep our social life out of the red when the costs start to add up? Oh. Simran Kaur from Girls That Invest joins us now. Simran, people come to you for money expertise. Are you hearing about this sort of problem a lot? We are hearing a lot of people talking about not just the cost of living crisis, but how it's starting to affect their friendships. And it's really interesting to see what they're saying. You're, you're famously a self-made woman. Do you have this problem in your friend group? <laughs> We're definitely seeing it um, in the Girls That Invest community, but you know I'm not one to, to say it hasn't affected our own friendships. It's just about making sure that you're being mindful of other people's money situations and not kind of assuming that you know we can all afford to go out every you know week. You you mentioned that it's interesting what people are saying. What are they saying? We're seeing a lot of conversations happening where people are worried that they're starting to get into more credit card debt, they're starting to get into more buy now, pay later debt, and it's all coming from the peer pressure of going out, spending more time with their friends and family, things like baby showers, gifts or weddings. It's all starting to add up and people are saying, how do we have those tough conversations without being the stingy friend? Right, Kiwis hate tough conversations. That's why I reckon the solution is I just get new friends <laughs> with the same amount of money that I have. That's one way of handling it. <laughs> what about if you're a Richie? Should you just cool your jets a little when you're out on the town, make it easy, easier on your mates who might not have the same amount of savings? <laughs> One thing that we really recommend um, people to do is make it a little bit more comfortable for all your friends. You never know what someone's going through. And so even making statements like, you know, it's only $50 or work a little bit harder next week can really put a lot of pressure on our friends without us realising it. So sometimes it's just a case of being more mindful of what we say. Wait, wait, wait. Are there people out there saying work a little bit harder next week? <laughs> <laughs> and ask those friends. Those are toxic friends right there. Those are toxic friends. <laughs> One of my big things, to be honest, is the best way to split a bill, and there are lots of conversations around how to do it. So uh, if you say, I just want to pay for the, the little side salad that I ordered, um, what's the best way of navigating that awkward conversation? <laughs> oh, look, I have been guilty of being so awkward about it. I would just pay 50-50, even when I, you know, didn't order any drinks or order any sides. But it's just about being comfortable enough to say, is it okay if I do this and just cover myself? I've seen it happen more and more frequently. Um, and, you know, we are in a cost of living crisis situation. I don't think people are unaware of that. And it doesn't mean you're the stingy friend. It doesn't mean you're the one that's bringing the vibe down. You're just taking care of your finances. That's not such a bad thing. Any other advice for people struggling with this problem? I think if I could give one last piece of advice, it's if you start taking, and, and no one loves this, but if you start taking a budget and start writing down where you're spending your money, it makes it a lot easier to track. And if anything, it's a little bit of ammo. You can say to your friends, look, I have actually spent X amount this week and I don't have that much left for going out, therefore I can't go. And they don't therefore feel like, you know, you hate them, you're trying to avoid them. It actually has some, some facts and figures behind it. Maybe actually do your budget at the table at the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> On the next <laughs> Oh, Simran, thank you so much for your expertise tonight. Thank you for having me. Look, Guy Williams is here. And Kate Rod just sitting next to me in Kano's seat. And we did the story just for you tonight, Thank Clint. you so much, because I am the poorest person I know. And I am <laughs> that one that's sitting at the end of the table just freaking out, waiting for this massive bill to yeah. land. I don't think the worst thing, though, is the, is the lack of control. Like, I can decide at a restaurant not to order an entree or not to order yeah. the extra glass of wine. 
But if everyone else is, then I've got no control over what I'm spending on that final bill. That's what I reckon. You need to establish it early on, even when you agree to go out. You know how you can say, let's go Dutch, where you all split evenly. Yeah. We need a new word for, for everyone just pays for what they eat. You know, like, <laughs> are we going Spanish weasel tonight? You know? <laughs> Wait, is, Sp is Spanish Weasel the first name you could come up with? <laughs> oh, yeah, OK, Gorgonzola. Everyone's Gorgonzoling uh, tonight. That's the name of food. Again, yeah, no that's, that's going to be confusing. Let's spatula it. <laughs> <laughs> Far out. You can do better than that, I reckon. What would you do in that situation? Yeah, I, I, I will dine and dash. That's my first option. <laughs> but if you, if you have to split it up, it's so funny how awkward it, how awkward it is to try and split the bill. Yeah. And it, it makes me grateful for New Zealand servers, though, because in... Um, in Melbourne, I was over there, and they, they don't they have no split bills. And thank you to the New Zealand servers who go through every yeah. item and go, do you get a coffee? And they do it. It's so <laughs> painful, but it helps. It's excruciating. One thing I will say, I wonder if this awkward conversation is quite a Kiwi thing. Because mm. I think in the States when I visited there, they've recently introduced this amazing app called Venmo, which mm. is in lots of other countries as well. And it means if you pay your $800 bill for dinner with the two of us going out, right. um, that I can give you my 400 bucks immediately just on the app. And it's, yeah. no, it's not an awkward yeah, conversation. To go tarantula. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You're Great.